everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video, I am teaching you how I get flat cake layers without any special tools. So let's get into it. Let's start with my supplies. So I'm starting out with the kitchen scale to weigh out my batter. I then have my eight inch by three inch pans. Cake pans are all the same material and the same brand for even cooking. One of them is a bit shorter, but that's gonna be fine. I have Baker's Joy, which is a flour and oil spray. Use whatever brand you prefer. I also have eight inch rounds of parchment and my last material is a cookie scoop. I use a three ounce scoop. Whatever scoop you have with you is just fine. Even layers also comes from how you prep your pan. So you wanna do a light dusting of whatever oil spray you use and then line it with parchment. This is gonna stop the cake from sticking to the pans as they bake. Remember that less is more when it comes to these types of sprays. If you use too much, it'll actually bake onto the sides of your pan and cause it to kind of look a little discolored, as you can see in my three inch pans. The next key is to know how much your batter weighs by weighing it. So I know that my batter makes 75 ounces, which means I can split it evenly between my three layers. I am making a three layer eight inch cake, which means that each of my pans needs to be 25 ounces. Because I have a short pan that's not as tall as the others, I'm going for 23 ounces for that one, and then 27 ounces in my three inch tall pans. If you don't have a kitchen scale, the next best thing is to use a cookie scoop to measure out your batter by number of scoops. When using a scoop, it's important to not over scoop or under scoop. So I like to dig out a big old heap and then wipe it off on the side of my bowl to have a nice even scoop every time. By leveling your scoop out, you're not over scooping or under scooping, which means that your scoop of batter should weigh roughly the same each time. So by using the same number of scoops of batter per pan, you should have even cake layers that are roughly the same in weight. So for this recipe and these pans, it translates to about nine scoops. Um, so nine times three is 27. So nine scoops equals 27 ounces per pan. Keep in mind that all cake batters rise differently. So you will need to do these calculations each time you use a different recipe to make sure you don't overflow your pans. I like to keep my margin of error at about two ounces per pan. This ensures that each pan bakes in the same amount of time and rises roughly the same amount. Lastly, remember to scrape that bowl. So I like to use a rubber spatula to get all of the batter out of my bowl. Again, making sure I'm using all of my cake batter, making all of my layers even. Without scraping my bowl, this layer would have been about three ounces shy of batter, putting me outside of my margin of error that I prefer to use. To remove air bubbles, you want to tap your pans on your counter. I like to give two pretty rough taps just to remove any large pockets. With one last look, they're about to go into the oven for 340 degrees for about 35 minutes. Baking at a lower temperature means that your sides rise evenly with the middle of your cake, instead of having that classic dome, which means that your sides set before the middle set. The next crucial step is to not open your oven door once your cakes are baking. If you open the door too early, the air will escape, all the heat will escape, and your cakes will collapse. For this cake, I leave the oven door closed for at least 30 of the 35 minutes that these cake bakes, giving me these nice even layers. Now you wanna rest your cakes in a cooling rack before turning them out. I like to rest mine for about 10 minutes until I can touch the pans roughly with bare hands. To turn my cakes out, I like to use a cardboard round and a cooling rack placed on top of my uh, pan to then do the old one-two flip. Once your cake is flipped, you wanna use your oven mitts or your hands to grab your pan and gently shake it to release the pan from the cake and pull up very slowly. And then take a look on the inside at that lovely release that is completely clean, which is perfect. Next thing you wanna do is remove the parchment from your cake. This is really important because the parchment will restrict your cake from cooling properly. As cakes cool, they shrink just the tiniest amount. So by leaving the parchment on, what you're actually doing is the top of your cake will shrink, but the bottom won't, creating this trapezoidal shape, which you don't want. This is one of the reasons why it's so important to remove your cakes from their pan while they're still warm. The other reason has to do with the butter in your cake if you use a butter-based cake. When butter gets cold, it gets hard and it sticks to things. So if I were to leave my cake in the pan when it, when it took it completely cold, the butter will harden and stick itself to the outside of my cake pan, um, which is not what I want. So by removing the cake when it's warm, I can not make the butter stick to the pan and also remove my parchment so my cake can restrict naturally without any, um, without any um, constrictions. If you think your cake is sticking to your pan, there's two ways to kind of fix this. I like the way of shaking, so you'll see what I'm doing here, is I give my pan a nice vigorous shake to make sure all of those sides have loosened up and the bottom is loosened up. You can also use a knife to run around the edge of your pan. Just make sure you're very careful you don't cut into your sponge. I must say this video was awesome. I was three for three with like three perfect releases and I really could not be happier. And now it's time for my final tip on how to keep my cakes nice and level and even. It's actually to cool my cakes upside down. So with my cake, again, upside down on my cake board, these are gonna be popped into the freezer. The weight of the cake will stop this cake from doming even more and just keep it nice and flat so I don't have to trim it if I don't want to. 
from this angle here, hopefully you can see that my cakes are nice and level. And the one in the back is the one that had the less amount of batter in it, which is why it's a little bit shorter. But once these cakes are stacked together, you're not really gonna notice. So I hope these tips help you make an even and level cake. And if they do, definitely tag me on my Instagram, at Baking and Broadway, so I can see what you've created. And per usual, if you like this content or you want to see more, you know what to do. I do post every second and fourth Friday of the month and hope to see you guys in the next video.